We are now joined by Tennessee head coach Kelly Harper. She'll begin with an opening statement and then we'll open it up for questions. Coach? Yeah, well, obviously disappointed in the outcome. Um, you know, you play a play a one point game at LSU, you're one bucket away from from coming home with the loss and you get the win. You one bucket away here from getting the win and you get the loss. So it's, uh, it's SEC and you have to play every single night and you have to play for 40 minutes. You can't play for 30 minutes and think you're going to get a win. Uh, obviously, I was really disappointed how we came out at halftime. Um, I let our, let our players know that. Um, we're really honest with them after the game about, you know, what I saw. You know, I, I – I think they'll be motivated coming out of this to be a better basketball team. They better be because uh, it doesn't get easier. It is, it is tough. It is every single night. And, um, you know, hopefully our players, um, hopefully our players will take this one to heart. I know they were disappointed, but I, you know, you, you can't just lose this and be disappointed. You got to lose this, be disappointed and be better because of it. All right. We'll take our first question from Ben. Coach, what do you think led to the 14 second half turnovers? And can you put your finger on maybe why the lack of effort was there in the second half? Well, it, um, it appeared that we were a little complacent, you know, coming out at halftime. I, I thought we got a score and I uh, thought it was an easy score. And then they get an easy score and another easy score. And I felt like they were getting easy buckets the whole quarter and they were scoring in a variety of ways. Um, they, when they get a turnover, they they're likely to get another one. They just they just turn up the heat, and and I thought we we they came out and punched us, and we didn't like it, uh, and and we just did not recover from that. Maria, Kelly, what were you looking for on that last shot? And have you ever been part of a final twelve seconds of a game that seemed like it was never going to end? Yeah, I honestly probably have. I've coached long enough now that I've, I've probably been involved in some crazy finishes. But, um, you know, obviously, as you can't get outscored 20 points in a quarter and win. But we had a chance. So we obviously had a chance. We had two opportunities to, to score. We um, turned, turned the other one over, wanted to get a shot up there, and then just overthrew the last one. Uh, you know, we were trying to, uh, trying to attack their zone in the middle right there and just – you know, they, they make it tough. They do a good job in that zone on their out-of-bounds defense. And, um, you know, with only three seconds left, we were just trying to get that into the paint and see if we could get something for Renaya. Rick? Kelly, the turnovers were certainly killer tonight. But uh, were the ladies, did you think they got fatigued at all towards the end of that third quarter running back and forth? Well, I think I think so. I think they, um, you know, in the in the third quarter, it's really a snowball. I didn't, I honestly, the thing that I was disappointed with was I thought we stopped guarding. I, I thought we stopped guarding on the defensive end and then they get happy because now they're scoring. Well, then they're turning it up defensively. Now they're getting steals. It was just a snowball effect. One thing led to another. And then um, we weren't getting back quick and transition. They were making hustle plays, getting offensive boards. And then we come down and we need to be poised and we need to be confident with the basketball. And we were really loose with it. I, you know, I thought we, we didn't work to get open. We had worked to get open earlier. We didn't in that, in that stretch. And uh, that was disappointing. Now I will say, obviously during that, I, it's really important. Georgia made a huge change schematically by not playing, um, uh, uh, Stady in the in the second half. Uh, I mean, just changed changed what they were looking for offensively, and we struggled to guard it. Chloe, coach, would you say this loss was more of a failure to execute and carry out the game plan, or was it more of a of a mental thing of a uh, lack of concentration? Um. Uh, uh, both maybe <laughs> it's hard to pinpoint just one thing. I, you know, I felt like to me, you, you, you can really, obviously you can pick up a stat sheet. Anybody can read the stat sheet and say, this was third quarter. Uh, I mean, Georgia won this game in the third quarter. And for us, just lack of focus, lack of toughness. 
And, to, and toughness is, is doing all the little things. Toughness is boxing out. Toughness is taking care of the ball. Toughness is sprinting the floor. Toughness is all those little things that we had done uh, minus those 10 minutes. Jordan. Hey, Kelly, the turnovers tonight, not an isolated event. Of course, 19 against LSU on Sunday. Aside from just kind of talking through each of those plays, what are things that this squad can do to, to limit the number of turnovers they have? Well, you got to gotta want the ball. Half of us didn't want the ball. Uh, I think that starts with that. Uh, we got to be able to enter the ball to the wing. Um, you know, we... And, and it's got to be important again. I mean, I think we've, we have done a, um, we've had some games where we really have been very conscientious about taking care of the basketball, being very protective, valuing every single possession and, you know, just kind of got away from us there um, today. And, and obviously the two teams we just played, LSU and Georgia, that's what they do. I mean, that's what they're built on to turn people over. But no, if you're going to get wins, you're going to be a good basketball team. You, you've got to be able to uh, limit some of those. Brandon. Hey, uh, Coach, in terms of the differences from the first half to the second half, early on it felt like that your uh, size all around was kind of uh, – that Georgia kind of fell behind because of it. Uh, what was the difference in terms of the um, size matchup later on and then – did you guys have any preparation for uh, Davenport at all? She was a player who hadn't been in the rotation much. Yeah, I think uh, she's pretty similar to some of their other players. So we, we felt pretty good about knowing how to guard her and what we needed to do. Um, the, the difference, the, we were able to uh, take advantage of our size and score quite a bit there in the, in the first half easily. Second half, we just didn't get our ball moving. We didn't get the execution offensively to be able to do that the entire second half. We still, we did a little bit, I think, in the fourth quarter, but, um, you know, you, you got to put the ball where it needs to go to take advantage of that uh, size. Michelle. Uh, yeah, Coach Harper, I just wanted to ask a little bit about what you said earlier about people maybe not wanting the ball. And I don't mean this in any way to make excuses, but I watch a lot of basketball across the country. And it seems to me like execution and wanting to take the shot at the end are things we're, we're seeing struggles with with a lot of teams this year. Do you think that has something to do with kind of the up and down nature of so many teams being out or or is that is that part of it? And by that, I mean, you know, teams being, you know, um, having COVID pauses and stuff, but it just seems like those uh, execution are things we're seeing a little bit of a problem with, especially at the end of games from, from teams. Yeah, I think, you know, I think just the, um, for, for not every team, but I think for a lot of teams, the start, stop, the inconsistencies with your practices, with your games, I think that can affect you. I think it can affect the execution. I think it affects, um, you know, coaches that have been coaching a while, you kind of have a rhythm of the season. You know, when your team's going to peak, you understand um, kind of uh, the long haul that January is. You know, it just feels different this year. It, you know, the, the uncertainties, the, the late start, but the longer practices, I mean, it's just, it just feels different. So I think, I think it probably does have some effect. Um, I was actually probably more referring to somebody wanting, willing to work a little bit harder to get open on the wing. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, I, but I, but I do, I, I do think there's a valid point there. And if I could ask one more, uh, please, uh, right now, the uh, LSU Texas A&M game is on LSU is up by four in overtime with 46 seconds left. Just another example of the SEC. But do you feel like, I mean, at this point, I think South Carolina is, has a little distance from somebody, but is it a kind of an up for grabs feeling um, after after that? I tell you, I I think the SEC is much better than they were last year. I thought the SEC was pretty good last year. I, I think the I think what you're seeing you you're seeing some some you know teams at the top, uh, the the middle teams, and even the bottom teams, really, uh, they can win. They can win, and uh, there's there's it's much more competitive. Uh, you know, just watching some of these teams, just knowing some of the players that were coming back for these teams, and how some of those teams actually finished out the season last year. You knew they were gonna they were improving, 
uh, as the season went. So I, th I tell you, I think this league is super tough this year and you have to play every night and it does not even matter. It does not matter who the opponent is. You have to come and you have to play and you got to play for 40 minutes or you're not going to win. Not in the SEC. Thanks coach. Madison. Coach, you look at the numbers, you out-rebounded Georgia 38 to 29, um, outscored them in the paint 42 to 32, but had 11 offensive rebounds and just three second chance opportunities. What did that play in tonight's loss? Well, I think the, I think that stat is really key. Um, we have been doing a really good job of offensive boards and scoring. Um, we, we've been getting in and, and, and sticking those in. That's been a big chunk of our offense. Um, tonight, the, that's flipped. Uh, they had 14 offensive po board points. That's, that's too many for us to give up. And, um, you know, I, I thought a lot of those were just hustle plays. You know, they just ran down the ball and, and were able to get a, get a score. So really, really, although the, the overall boards was in our favor, really disappointed in that offensive board category. And a quick follow-up, Coach. Just with the wee back pat night tonight, I see you have your purple on. Obviously not the outcome that you guys wanted, but just how special was it tonight to honor your um, former coach? Well, we have an opportunity. We'll, we'll actually get to play a, a few of these games that are that are considered our wee back pat games. And it's a big deal. You know, it's a big deal for me. It's a big deal for, for our program. It's a big deal nationwide, but, you know, I had a had a text from one of my teammates talking about how much they loved our jerseys, you know. And man, I I don't know how they would they they actually felt about it, but if I'd have put on a jersey that said Summit on the back of it, that's who I'm representing when I go out there. That's it's heavy, that's heavy and and inspiring. Should be very inspiring, and I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that our jerseys say that. You know, one of the things that um, that is that is important is that we continue to um, salute. We continue to honor her legacy, um, and obviously we're doing that with the Pat Summit Foundation, but also what she means to women's basketball, what she means to me, what she means to this program and this university. I, you know, it's it's uh, it's a it you know heavy really heavy sometimes when you think about it all right we'll close it out with two final questions from will and then rick yeah you know the players mentioned a lot comfortability is a problem in the second half and then you kind of reflected that with complacency as a coach how are ways that you can try to prevent that especially with maybe some lessons you learned tonight about how you can handle that in the future yeah well we talked about our toughness and lack thereof and defined what that is to make sure they were very clear. It's all the details, you know, and I think just making sure they understand that. Um, I, I tell you what, I'll be, I'll be disappointed if they don't, they don't come out of this fired up. Um, I think they're a competitive group and it's really, I feel like it's the first time that they've showed us that, shown us that this year. So that's why I was a little taken aback, but um, you know, hopefully, Hopefully they'll they'll learn a lesson from this and, and move on. Rick. Kelly, you all used to do it during the summit era and and did it at LSU and the ladies opted to stay in the locker room during the anthem tonight. Talk about the the decision behind all that. Um well the the game timing sheet at LSU had just had both teams in the locker room at the night. And you're right, that's what that's what I we used to do. Um and it was just it was just your game protocol. So that was the game protocol at LSU, and our players liked it. Uh, they they commented on it, and so we we made sure that that was actually what they wanted. And they said that if if we could do that, that's what they wanted to be able to do. And um, we talked through event management to see about changing the log logistics for that, and allowed them to to stay in. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you.